Sonar, con, target is at 170. Yes, you read the title correctly. This history lesson is about a freaking rock that almost sparked a third world war, and that's terrible. You know, war in general is really terrible. Since 1800, over 37 million people have lost their lives on the battlefield. But yet we humans, we freaking love war. I mean, seriously, why else has there only been 268 years of global peace in the last 3,400 years, at least according to a 2003 report in the New York Times? Who says there wasn't some random click noise tribal fight in the middle of fucking Zimbabwe? No, no, no. We don't know for sure, but the point is mankind and war are inseparable, like salt and pepper, Tom and Jerry, bacon and eggs, or drinking Pap's Blue Ribbon and a mugshot. There are many good reasons to start a war. For example, religion. Deus vault. Revolution. Oui, oui, baguette. Bringing freedom and democracy to oppressed countries. And there are bad reasons, like a war over a useless rock. To be fair, with an area of 0.5 square miles, it's quite a big rock, and it's even floating. Wow. Located a few hundred miles near the coast of Greenland, it goes by the name of Hans Island. And as you can see, That's just a stupid boulder! But for some reason, two countries have become obsessed with this place, resulting in a massive conflict that has lasted nearly 50 years. Now, the question is, who are those countries? And why do they want this rock so badly? Listen up, my American viewers, one of those countries is your maple syrup chugging neighbor. Anita Maxwin. Anita Maxwin. And the other one is Denmark. Okay, I don't know any Danish celebrities. Wait, let me check. What? Gus Fring is from Denmark? Look at me, Edward. So is there a secret pirate treasure on the island, or does it belong to a billionaire and it's full of children? Well, no. In fact, the island has no residents, no resources, and offers no territorial advantages, which makes the whole situation even more bizarre. Denmark argues that the island belongs to Greenland, which also belongs to Denmark, because it was first discovered by Greenlandic explorer Hans Hendrik during the 19th century American and Danish Arctic expeditions. Hey, look what's that! This stupid rock is completely useless, but it will cause a war that will span over half a century. Also subscribe to the Dag Historian. Sweet, let's call it Hans Island. Oh, and Danish indigenous people also use the island as a fishing spot. But the Canadians argue that the rock is closer to Ellesmere Island and therefore belongs to Canada due to a British order in council from 1880 which transferred ownership of British Arctic territories to the Dominion of Canada. Now the whole dispute began in 1973 when both countries could not agree on the status of the island which fell right on the maritime boundary line between Canada and Greenland. Point. Back then they said, Nah, fuck it, bro. We'll just figure it out later. And for 10 years, everything was cool. But then, all of a sudden, this happened. In 1983, the Canadian oil firm Dome Petroleum sent out a bunch of scientists to the island to do some research without telling the Danish government. Emotional damage! They were spotted by Greenlandic Arctic historian Ken Harper. Oh, these stupid bastards! And to make matters worse, he said the scientist even wore cute little hats with the words Hans Island NWT written on them. It was like a top 10 anime betrayal moment. Denmark was in shambles. And they swore vengeance. So what did they do? Tom Hoyam, the Danish Minister of Greenlandic Affairs, was sent out to the island. He planted the Danish flag and left a bottle of schnapps along with a note that read Welcome to the Danish U. Which means, welcome to the Danish island. This was obviously a declaration of war. The Canadians would surely retaliate, but how? Well, they also sent troops to Hans Island and replaced the Danish flag with their own, leaving behind a bottle of whiskey to assert dominance. It was the beginning of a 40-year-long real-life COD capture the flag match in which both nations would repeatedly send troops to the island. 
The unofficial rules were simple. Steal the enemy's flag, plant your own, and leave behind a bottle of liquor. And due to the seriousness of this political situation, the soldiers obviously got rid of the alcohol in the most professional way. Yep, the troops had a good time, until the conflict almost escalated when both nations started sending fully armed navy vessels to the island. Fucking warships. Do you know what would have happened if one of those drunken soldiers, I don't know, slipped on a banana peel? OMG, an accident like this could have easily started a global war, maybe even World War III. Okay, probably not. They quickly stopped with the warship stuff, and in 2022 they finally came to an agreement, splitting the island approximately in half. Nobody was hurt, and therefore the so-called Whiskey War is now widely remembered as the friendliest war ever.